Hi everyone, so does this video look familiar at all? It's the reveal trailer for the Nintendo Switch. I remember when I watched this for the first time just feeling relieved it wasn't a Wii U upgrade. The concept was simple but so appealing. The ability to switch between home and portable gaming seemingly on the fly. The thought that you can take your own adventure wherever you go without any compromise in graphical quality was amazing. In this video I want to take a look back at the Nintendo Switch over its lifespan and I look forward to the next console which is being strongly tipped for a 2024 release. Nintendo had remarkable success with the Nintendo Wii, though I imagine they lost some of the more hardcore demographic in that period. When they followed up with the Wii U, I think they lost even more. I did own both the Wii and the Wii U, but I actually forget the Wii U even exists sometimes. However, if we didn't have the Wii U, we may not have had the Switch. As of December last year, the Switch has done incredibly well for Nintendo, totaling 131 million sales followed by the PS5 at 45 million and the Xbox Series X at 25 million. To be fair to the other two though, they've had shorter life cycles. When I got my hands on the console, and Mario Odyssey specifically, I absolutely loved it. The game and the system perfectly complemented each other. I've sunk a ridiculous amount of hours into Mario Odyssey, and I feel that came a lot down to the portability of the system. I rarely played Mario Odyssey in the dock. I play it everywhere and anywhere I could. Lunch breaks at work, waiting in the car, at home when someone else was using the TV, I had no restrictions, it was amazing. Over the course of the console's life, I've had a lot of awesome gaming experiences. I feel the Switch has delivered the peak of almost all of Nintendo's IPs. This moves me on to my standout games of this generation. Let's start first and foremost with Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 for me is the peak of the series so far, and I've been playing it since the Nintendo 64. The online play is fantastic. I don't think I have any issues or bandwidth problems. The game itself looks stunning and the amount of tracks and characters available now with the expansion is the most we've ever had. Rightly or wrongly, it holds a special place for me as it really helped during the COVID pandemic. Myself and my friend at work would play it on our lunch breaks to try and distance ourselves from the gravity of the situation and, like Mario Odyssey, it had a massive benefit for my mental health. Right game, right time. However, that time has passed and I still play it almost weekly. Moving on to Smash Bros. Ultimate. Again, a very similar story. Easily the best in the series, in my opinion, and again, I've been playing this since Smash Bros. 64. Online play isn't as good as Mario Kart, and whilst two-player matches are generally seamless, four-player matches rarely happen and tend to suffer with lag when they do. Regretfully, none of my friends have a Switch, and they're more Xbox and PC gamers, so I didn't really have anyone to enjoy local multiplayer with, which is a shame. Now, I can't ignore the obvious games of this generation, Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I did a separate video on the Zelda series generally, and my thoughts on it and where I think the series is headed. It's fair to say, I absolutely love both of them, and I've probably spent more time on them than any other game I own. The Fire Emblem series has also received some fantastic games this generation. We've been graced with two titles, both fantastic and challenging as they should be. I still need to finish the last one. Lastly, the game I've sunk probably the most hours I've ever spent in a game on is Mario Maker 2. For a Mario fan like me, the ability to build and share my own levels and create whole games with multiple themed worlds is just amazing. My only problem is I don't have a 7 year old's imagination anymore, so I'm not really that creative. I mainly focus on updating existing Mario levels, but in a slightly different way. These are just some of the highlights for me, but Here's my list of all the games that I've loved from this generation. What I've also loved about this console is just how it embraced the indie scene. I appreciate the other consoles are doing this, but I just feel they're more suited to the Switch. Now, the Switch hasn't been without its faults. We can't forget the infamous Joy-Con drift, which I suffered firsthand twice. The repair process was a joke. Whilst I appreciate they were repairing them for free, in each case I got it returned, the issue remained, so I'm not really sure what they fixed. So inevitably, I had to buy a new Joy-Con, and the price of which was just extortionate. Another gripe I had with the console was the online play. 
not only from a performance perspective, but also from a policy perspective. What I mean by this is Nintendo's reluctance to move with the times and allow a full unrestricted PvP experience with all of their games. The reliance on the friend system, still for a lot of games, is just so backwards. Thank God for Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. They've made massive strides since the Wii, but it's still not 100% there. The performance, as highlighted with Smash Brothers, still isn't what I'd expect from a console of this generation, and it needs some work for its successor. The OS still feels clunky too, it's just not as smooth as the Xbox. I can't seamlessly transition from game to opening the store back to a game like I can with the Xbox, I still have to have one application open at a time. Lastly, the ability to connect to a Bluetooth headset came way too late in the console's life cycle. So I've been a Nintendo gamer since the NES and I've owned every console. When I look back at where I think I would rank the Switch, it's difficult not to let nostalgia influence me. I have a soft spot for the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube because I grew up with them. However, if I was going to remove nostalgia, I would say the Switch is probably their best console they've ever released. This is down to several reasons. It fits in with my current lifestyle in so far that I rarely have time to just sit in front of a TV to play games, so with the Switch I can take them wherever I go. Secondly, I have access to a reasonably decent NES, SNES and 64 back catalogue, so I don't have to go back to those physical consoles to enjoy retro games. And lastly, I feel that whilst underpowered, graphically some of the more AAA titles from Nintendo are really good, especially for the hardware. I appreciate this isn't for all games and third party games tend to suffer, just look at more Combat 1. On the whole though, I don't think I've been disappointed with any first party efforts. So there we go, that's my overview of the Switch in all of its glory. So where are we headed with Nintendo Switch 2? What can we expect? It's probably no surprise that we can realistically expect a significant upgrade in the hardware, particularly if they want to last another 7 years. Rumours are floating around what the possible tech will be inside, so I'll let you do your own research on that, as it's all speculation at the moment. I would hope that the new hardware is up there with the current Xbox and PlayStation consoles, at least. The common assumption is a new system will follow the same concept as its predecessor in that it will act as a portable and a home system. Given this is the main appeal for me, that's not a bad thing. Lastly, it's also strongly suggested that some of the long-awaited sequels are being held back for the Switch 2, mainly Mario Odyssey 2 and Metroid Prime 4. I expect Odyssey 2 will be a launch title, maybe with Prime 4 in the same year, and then Mario Kart 10 maybe next year. That's what's rumoured, but what I personally want to see is better and less restrictive online play, more storage space on the device, and also access to the GameCube and Wii back catalogue. I also think the system needs to be friendlier and more accessible to streamers and the ability to record longer videos. I would expect all of these to be addressed in some way, and I also hope that they keep the current back catalogue accessible so I don't have to go back to the OG Switch if I ever want to play a SNES game. So here's hoping to a Nintendo Switch sequel in 2024. What have you enjoyed and what have you not enjoyed about the Switch? And what would you like to see in the new console? Let me know in the comments. Peace out.